Let's look at the vessels below or posterior to the diaphragm based on our lab list for the spring of 2021. Right? And remember, we're going to go from the outside in, meaning we're going from the most distal to the most proximal when we're talking about veins, because that's the way the uh, venous return works. So let's go with the femoral vein as the beginning. And remember, we're most distal on this list. We're coming off of the leg tissue, very similar to how we came off of the brachium and went towards the axillary and then back to the subclavian. So here we're going to go femoral to iliac and back to the uh, vena cava. So let's start at the femoral vein. We'll then run into the external iliac vein. Here's a new word uh, that we haven't seen with the arteries, iliac. So when we're thinking about iliac, we want to uh, consider that iliac might be analogous to the axillary area on the arteries that we talked about earlier. So if the armpit is where the arm meets the torso, then the iliac region is similar to that, meaning that that's where the leg meets the uh, torso as well, or the inguinal region, just a little bit higher than that, but good enough for this particular uh, demonstration. So whenever you see iliac, let's think about around the inguinal region, around the groin area. So we've gone from leg, which is femoral, up to the external iliac vein. The external iliac vein and the internal iliac vein will both merge into something called the common iliac vein, the common iliac vein. So the word common should tell you that these are, this is the um, root for the external and the internal. The external will flow out in, uh, from the femoral. Right, the common iliac vein is going to merge into the posterior vena cava. Remember, that's the same thing as the inferior vena cava in humans. As we make our way uh, back up to the heart, we're moving towards the heart, and we're going to move out of the iliac region and into the iliolumbar region. So ilio, there's the word iliac, going with the same word up here, which was iliac. So iliolumbar means uh, pretty much the iliac crests, as far as if you put your hands on your hips, where they would be. Uh, where they meet the lumbar spine or the lumbar muscular region. So you can think about this iliolumbar region as being right along uh, where you would put your hands on your hips. The next uh, vein we'll see is coming from the kidney, and this is the renal vein, the renal vein. As we go uh, closer to the diaphragm, we're right underneath the diaphragm. Remember that the liver is on the right side of the body, and the other word for liver is hepatic. The liver has its own vein, or the liver does have a hepatic vein, but the liver has a vein that collects blood from the digestive system, and the liver modifies that blood, uh, takes the nutrients out, stores them, changes them, adds some things back into the blood, and then sends all of that blood from the digestive system that it, that it cleaned or modified uh, back to the um, posterior vena cava and, and then so on back to the heart. Uh, the hemiazygous vein we've already looked at, that should not be here. That's going to be something that you'll need to identify above the diaphragm, right? So let's look at a picture of that and we'll walk through those structures together. All right, so here we are starting at the femoral vein. This is the pig's left leg. So remember, we're looking uh, at our subject from the front. So here's the pig's left leg. I haven't drawn the tibial and the um, fibular, all that. So we're just starting at the femoral vein. All right, so if you see a vein that's on the pig's leg above the knee, essentially, that will be the femoral vein. In the uh, inguinal region, which would be here along this line. So if I had both inguinals, would be here. So we're at this iliac region I mentioned. So the one that's coming from the femoral is the external iliac vein. You can see an internal iliac vein, and they merge together at this. I don't color dark here so you would know it was different. 
at the common iliac vein. So the external and the internal come together at the common iliac vein. Femoral, external, common iliac. Also internal to the common iliac. Now here's the iliolumbar. And I've drawn it as a straight line. Now, of course, it's not exactly straight, but it's going to go across the hips. Right? So this will be the blood coming from the lumbar region, and it'll be coming almost horizontal, more horizontal than these, uh, not more horizontal than the common iliac for certain. So you'll see an iliolumbar vein and artery just above this split. And actually, the iliolumbar sometimes comes off of the common iliac. That's not an unusual presentation either. So don't be don't be alarmed if you see that. Just use common sense and say, well, if it's going across or it's a little bit uh, angled down, but it looks like it's going around the hips, then that's the iliolumbar. If it splits, that's the common iliac. Right? Well, if it's, yeah, if it splits, it's a large trunk. That's the common iliac. All right, let's go to the posterior vena cava. That's the one that you're all familiar with, running right next to the aorta. The aorta will be here. And we can remember that the aorta would be on the left because the aorta is coming off the left side of the heart and the portal vena cava is returning to the right side of the heart. Here you can see the renal vein coming out of the left kidney. Of course, there's a right kidney and the right renal vein. And we want to pay attention to this hepatic portal. The hepatic portal uh, takes all of the blood from the digestive organs, the intestines, the spleen, the pancreas, the stomach, um, everything that needs to be cleaned, essentially, of nutrients and of bacteria, of um, metabolites from alcohol, from ibuprofen, any kind of drugs, that kind of thing. The liver wants to deal with that before the heart has to. So the hepatic portal vein is just a way, it's not just a way, but it is the way for the digestive system uh, components in the blood to be removed from the blood uh, and or modified so that they can return uh, to the to the heart safely. You don't want things that the liver can catch uh, and fix, like bacteria, uh, going to the heart. You want it to be, uh, from your digestive system, you want it to be cleaned first. So let's think of the liver as the the gate before sending blood back to the portal vein that's been cleaned. Uh, the liver gets to do all that and then the blood goes up the portal vein and to the heart after the liver has modified it, if it was digestive blood. Now if it was if it was blood from the leg or one of the abdominal uh, organs, like a reproductive organ, something like that, that blood doesn't need to be um, doesn't need to be modified by the liver through the hepatic portal vein. The hepatic portal vein is only for the digestive system blood, right? So this other blood would go directly into the portal vein and then return to the heart. The digestive system sends its blood to the hepatic portal so that may be dealt with by the liver first.